I want to share exactly how I went from a size 24 to a size 4 without counting calories. There are five things that I did. So the first one is I stopped drinking liquid calories. At the beginning of my journey, I was drinking seven cans of regular Dr. Pepper every single day. That was almost a thousand calories a day in just liquid, not counting any food. I didn't want to give up the pop and I didn't want to give up the number of cans because I had tried that in the past and it just backfired, but I knew I had to stop drinking the liquid cows in order to get in a deficit. So. I literally just switched from seven cans of regular to seven cans of Diet Dr. Pepper, and I saved myself a th almost a thousand calories a day without having to count or track calories. I literally just made that switch. So I didn't even realize that I was in a calorie deficit because I was still getting my pop, basically having my cake and eating it too. That was like a huge thing for me. Number two. I started meal prepping and then portioning my meals into containers. So if I didn't have my meals prepped and I was hungry, I would end up eating stuff that I didn't want to eat and I would overeat. So I would end up in a surplus all the time and gain weight. By meal prepping, this is my prepped meat for the week and this is my meal prepped lunch. By meal prepping and having everything ready to go in the fridge and freezer, I set myself up for success because when I'm hungry, I grab my already prepped meals. I have no excuse not to eat what's already made. And then by portioning out what's in the containers, I am controlling what I'm eating, so I'm automatically eating less because you can only fill a container so much. So I automatically eat less without having to even look at the numbers. And that is the point of making this video. At the beginning of my journey, any sort of calorie counting or number tracking triggered my emotional eating. So I literally couldn't count calories. But doing the things that I'm sharing with you in this video helped set me up for success because all of these things help me eat less and get into a calorie deficit without having to look at the numbers until I was ready. And that helped me stay on track, look forward to what I was eating and doing and lose a total of 130 pounds and keep it off for nine years. Number three, I stopped eyeballing all of my food and started portioning it out. And that sort of goes along with like number two. But what I was doing before was I was eyeballing what I thought was a portion and just putting it on my plate. And I ended up eating way more than I thought. So I bought a scale, a food scale for measuring out like meat and stuff. And I bought some measuring cups and spoons and I measure everything that goes into my mouth, into my body. I make sure that I portion it out and I use the back, like the serving sizes on the backs of packages as a guide. And that's how I kind of learned through trial and error, like what serving sizes worked for me. I lost all my weight with portion control. So if you want to know the exact meals and portions that I ate to lose the weight, you can buy my weight loss ebook called The First 50. The link is down below and code Nicole will save you 10%. I also have huddled HTLT SEPs best tasting protein powder ever. This is maple cookie. I love putting maple cookie in my plain fat-free Greek yogurt. It makes such a good high protein fruit, low cal fruit dip. It's so good. Code Nicole will now officially save you 15%. It used to be 10, now it's 15. Link is down below if you wanna check it out. Number four. I switched to low cal versions of all my favorite foods. So I didn't change what I was eating, just like the kind, like I didn't want to give up my favorite foods. So I literally just switched to a low cal version. So like I didn't give up bread, but I buy lower calorie bread. So this is the Dempster's whole wheat and it's lower calorie. It's two slices for 170 cals, where a lot of other breads are like two slices for like 200 or 240. It was really, it's really important 
it was at the beginning of Kyle and I's journey. Kyle, my husband, he's lost the same amount of weight as me and kept it off for the same amount of time. It was really important that we didn't make drastic changes because any time that we did, it failed. Um, so this bread, it's normal sliced bread. Like there are a lot of low-cal breads out there, but they're really thin and that's not satisfying for us. So we really tried to choose a low-cal version that felt like the real thing so that we were eating less automatically just by choosing light cheese slices. I was getting my cheese slice, but automatically eating less without have to count numbers or calories. I love ice cream and fudgesicles and these Greek yogurt smoothie bars from Walmart, they literally taste like a fudgesicle, but they're less cows and they have more protein. So I'm getting my ice cream and more protein to help me feel full and saving cows without even knowing. We also switched to low cow versions of like all of our condiments and stuff. So like low cal syrup, low cal like Miracle Whip um, for mayo, um, light ranch, low cal milk, like the 0% Fair Life and almond milk. So it took me um, two years to lose the weight because um, I had a, a sort of, I went off track for a while, but I went from a size 24 to a size 10 and lost my first like 100 pounds in, in a year. And then I took away treats and I tried to like speed up my weight loss and that caused me to go off track for a while. So it took me a bit of the next year to get back on track, put the treats back in. And then I lost the last 30 pounds and went down slowly from there, from the 10 all the way down to the size four through, you know, continuing to stay in a calorie deficit with the portion control. Now I look at calories and then also with body recomposition through like building muscle and stuff. And that's really changed my body, tightened and toned my loose skin. And so that, you know, I lost the majority of my weight in a year and then it took me another year to sort of get back on track with that and everything. So number five is tracking everything that I was eating. So I couldn't look at the numbers, I wasn't ready, but I still needed to have an idea of how much food I was taking in. So I just bought like a regular, like a journal or a, a plain notebook. And this is how, because I was using portion control, this is how I would, I'm a pen and paper girl. Like I know you can use apps and stuff now. And I sometimes use like my fitness pal and stuff. I'm not sponsored, I just use it. But I still, I don't know, I like old school pen to paper. So I would track it in a notebook like this. And this is what I would do. I ate breakfast, lunch, dinner, and two snacks. And I made sure that I drank eight eight ounce glasses of water. So I literally put little boxes to check off the water as I drank it. And then I left spots to write exactly what and how many portions I ate for each meal meal and then I would put the date. That way I could track what I was eating, hold myself accountable and then at the end of the week I would weigh myself and if I didn't lose weight or I gained weight I could look back and go oh did I eat too much here or maybe I'm not eating balanced and I went off track because of it. It allowed me to be make myself honest, hold myself accountable and then it also let me see patterns of where I was doing great like with the portions where I would lose the weight or if I wasn't having progress I could look at my diet and tweak it so that I could actually start getting results and that really helped and so that's why tracking helped me like lose weight without counting calories because all I would do is weigh myself once a week after eating my meal plan for the week if I lost weight, that meant all the things I was eating, all the portions I was eating, had me eating in a calorie deficit. If I didn't lose weight or I gained weight, it meant I was eating in a calorie surplus. And so this helped me without looking at numbers or counting calories to go, oh, maybe I need to eat a little bit less this week so that I can see if it'll work. And I have two bonuses that I wanna share with you guys. The other thing that really helped was keeping individual single serving like snacks on hand. So like, you know, little yogurt cups, little boxes of raisins. These are like the fiber one bars. Because 
like I said, I didn't want to give up treats. I didn't want to give up snacks. Anytime I did that, it would just fail. It would trigger my emotional eating and I would go in this cycle, you know? So having single serving things on hand, these are like the little laughing cow individual servings. It let me eat what I wanted, but when the container's done, it's done. So I'm less likely to overeat. And that was really helpful because I did have emotional eating. So learning how to eat in portion, it was a little tricky at first. It doesn't come perfect right away. I did make mistakes, but having these let me go, oh, hey, when I'm done this, I'm done my serving for the day. It helped me get used to eating less. And then the second thing that I did, some of you aren't gonna like this because it's hard to eat similar meals, but the second thing that I did was like, um, I ate similar meals and yes, I switch it up when I get bored or, you know, I just switch it up just because to get different nutrients or whatever. But for most of the time, I eat similar meals every day because one, I do keep an eye on the calories now, but I still don't like tracking them. So it lets me, like by eating similar every day, I know I'm getting the calories that I'm supposed to and staying on track with like my weight and stuff without even having to count or look because I'm eating similar meals. It also helped me with the portion control because I knew, okay, these portions are working for me because I'm eating them all the time. It also helped with another thing, figure out food intolerances. Like I love oatmeal, but I learned if I eat it too many days in a row, I get really bloated. And that affects how my clothes fit because like it's tight around the waist when I'm bloated and it affects the scale because the bloating makes the weight go up. So by eliminating the food intolerances or at least keeping them to a minimum, that really helped me with my results as well. So the friends, I hope that this helps. Weight loss should never be a punishment. And if you're like me and you struggle with the numbers, there are ways to get in a calorie deficit without counting calories. And I hope this video helps you look at some things and inspires you to find things that help you do that without getting triggered by the numbers. So thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate your support, Sassy and I both do. And watch This Fit and This Fit for more fun, sustainable weight loss tips. Cause Sass and I are real friends, losing weight in the real world. And we love you, and we love our food. You gotta love it. You gotta love what you're doing. You gotta make it easy for yourself. It's not about being hard. It's just about eating less and figuring out what portions work for you and what foods you like to do it. So thank you, thank you, and thank you. And I'll catch you in the next big Kilaroni. And I'm gonna peace out with my hat. Don't fit my head. Got a big head. Thanks. Thanks for watching. See you, sweeties. Peace out. Protein hat. Whoa, it's working. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> See ya. Bye. <laughs> Remember the friends that weight loss isn't just about the number on the scale. It's also about here and here. Heart and mindset. Fight through it. You can do it. Don't give up.